2014 is over, which means award season, chip counting, and best ofs. But some of the most interesting movies of the year went mostly unseen. These are the top 10 underrated films of 2014. Hi, can I get two Jackson Cokes, please? Whoa, <laughs> you're really lasering into me with your pee-pee missiles there. Kicking us off at number 10, we're actually looking at a vastly underrated rom-com. And yes, we know that sounds a bit ironic. More and more moviegoers nowadays are getting a bit tired of the neat, cute, breakup, makeup, happy ending formula, and under isn't exactly the prefix they'd use when talking about how they're rated. But 2014 saw some new life breathed into a badly beaten dead horse. And while they came together, dismantled the cliches in a worthwhile meta fashion, it's a pretty divisive movie movie no matter how you slice it. But another film took poop jokes, pee farting, and the issue of abortion and turned it into one of the year's best romantic comedies with Obvious Child. Marvelously carried by Jenny Slate's simple, honest, and f***ing hilarious performance, Obvious Child manages to find love in a pretty strange place, but it's non-judgmental and it doesn't waste its time with preaching or politics, reserving itself for honest character exploration and lots of laughs. And yes, the ending might be a bit cheesy, but it is a romantic comedy after all. It's plenty charming, despite its flaws. You don't go to the movies, do you? Is there a reason why you're asking me this? You know, maybe you had a recommendation. It was a good year for underrated twin movies, with two films about eerie doppelgangers slipping beneath most moviegoers' radar, while still garnering some impressive reviews. And while the double channeled Franz Kafka in the best possible way, our pick goes to the chillier and even more puzzling Enemy. You probably know director Denis Villeneuve best from his last turn with Jake Gyllenhaal from the incredible thriller Prisoners. His newest film has all the same craft and tension while telling a story that was a little too experimental and open-ended for a successful box office. That doesn't make the film any less worth the watch, but it's an experience for different expectations. This isn't a puzzle you solve a la Prisoners. This is one that leaves you fervently pondering and googling after the credits roll as confused as ever. But the performances are spot on, the tone is in the right place, and there's enough meat there to to offer a totally different perspective on second viewing. And for that, we think this one deserves another look. I wanted to make something sacred, free, with new perspective, open the mind. Of course, every year there are some truly phenomenal documentaries that are almost guaranteed to be underrated. Cinema goers just aren't buying as many tickets for the non-fiction film, despite the fact that the genre is more accessible than ever, a far cry from the PBS doldrums that many expect when they hear the word documentary. Documentaries are telling stories that are often stranger and more thrilling than fiction, but viewers just aren't hearing enough about them. One of these is The Internet's Own Boy, the documentary about Aaron Swartz, a co-founder of Reddit, political organizer, and social justice advocate who tragically took his own life at age 26. It's highly acclaimed and available right now for free on YouTube, and you should definitely check it out. But for our number eight, we're actually turning to Hodorowsky's Dune, a movie about a movie that is touted as perhaps the greatest film never made Hodorowsky's Dune is a portrait of a creative mad scientist who dared to dream a 14-hour epic of Proustian proportions that was ultimately too big to fly. It's not exactly underrated in the sense that critics are rating it lower than it deserves, but that its almost universal critical acclaim hasn't exactly translated into asses and seats. But do yourself a favor and buck the trend. The dreaming alone is worth it. Give my regards to that suicidally romantic Scoundrel. You would think that by 2014 we'd all be tired of vampire films. They've long since become the butt of jokes that are so tired they make twerking references seem relevant. But Jim Jarmusch changed all that when he took this cliche by the fangs and did something completely fresh in Only Lovers Left Alive. Starring Tom Hiddleston and Tilda Swinton, who also deserves an honorable mention for underrating is Snowpiercer. The film completely turns the genre on its head. Of course, it doesn't do this in a non-stop action-packed sort of way. It's Jim Jarmusch after all, so it is certainly going to be a slower pace than some viewers might expect, but it's probably one of the most accessible films of a truly notable indie director, so it may be a good starting point if you haven't seen his work yet. The film is cool, but not hip. It's as much about love and music as it is about blood and horror. But it's certainly worth a watch if for no other reason than to see Tom Hiddleston and Tilda Swinton find marvelous humor and chemistry amidst a wonderfully moody tale. Gary, why do you stick around like this? You're old enough, smart enough, do your own thing. What's most important right now is me um, taking care of Dorothy and Mama. 
because uh, we kind of got a family problem right now. It's hard to think of anyone who might describe Nick Cage as under anything. The man is the king of over, the top, the line, or the hill. Cage is overpaid, overacting, or maybe even overrated, which might be why one of his most recent films has finally come in under the radar. We're talking about Joe, which is most surprising due to its recent acclaim for Cage's understated performance. It's a southern gothic about an ex-con who befriends a boy who's having trouble with his abusive family and the violence that inevitably befalls them both. Ty Sheridan, who we know and love from his incredible performance, in Mud makes a perfect counterpoint to Cage's Joe, and the two find the perfect balance between grit and heart. It's a subtle and measured renaissance for a big actor who's managed to earn himself a bad reputation and worth watching as a reminder that Nicolas Cage is more than just a histrionic basket case. He's a genuinely talented actor. Hi, love. I need you to hold it together for me. What happened? I'll fix it. It'll all go back to normal. Next up at number five, we're looking at an unfairly underwatched British film named after its titular character. And while it could easily have been Dom Hemingway, a film that seemed to have not much ado about something that was pretty damn interesting, we're actually giving the slot to the astounding Locke. Tom Hardy gives a world-class performance in this one-man show that sees him take phone calls in his car while driving down the highway. Seriously, that's all he does. It's just him in a car, on the phone. And yet it's a gripping story in its simplicity. Beautifully photographed and boldly avoiding all the easy action car chases one could have built into it, Hardy just drives and acts and it f***ing works. It took just eight days to shoot this whole film in chronological order, like a play. Driving down the highway, rolling three cameras at a time, and stopping only to change their memory cards. But despite its simplicity, the psychology is marvelously complex and definitely something to catch up on if you missed it like everyone else. Gunther Bachmann? Martha, Sullivan, U.S. Embassy, Berlin. I know you by reputation, of course. That can't be good. Men with good reputations usually aren't much use to me. Next up at number four, we want to honor a few of the last performances of one of our era's best actors, Philip Seymour Hoffman. No, we're not talking about the latest Hunger Games, because how could that possibly be underhyped? And we have to give an honorable mention to God's Pocket that just missed our list. But for our pick, we're looking at A Most Wanted Man, the spy thriller that's more CCTV and legal red tape than secret gadgets and fancy cars. Adapted from a novel by the writer of Tinker Tailor's Soldier Spy, A Most Wanted Man sports a similar plot density and obscurity while expecting just as much from its audience. The difference is that it's led by the likes of PSH, who, like he always does, channels every Every ounce of honesty and pain he can muster into a performance of astounding craft and emotion. It might not be his highest acclaimed work, but it's the final entry into a massive catalog of masterpieces by a true artist, and for that, it deserves its due. I believe in God, and I know Henry believes in God, and there's no harm Henry wants to see me come to. I believe in that. Look at the harm you've come to, and where's Henry? Counting down to number three, we have to hand it to David Mycod's Australian dystopian drama, The Rover, a kind of quieter, more meditative Mad Max with far less leather. A two-handed road movie of sorts starring Guy Pearce and Robert Pattinson, the performances are, as with most everything else on this list, top-notch. The film was a bit too slow and languid to find the kind of theatrical success that it may have deserved, but here's to hoping for renewed life on the small screen. Mycod keeps everything minimal. The dialogue, the plot, the exposition and backstory, it's not so much about the grandness of a world after an apocalypse as it is about two people living in it. The performances are marvelously understated in such a way that even the slightest spark of humanity jumps out at you, and this attention to nuance makes it the kind of film worth chewing on. No, it won't be making many more millions anytime soon, but let's hope it finds the cult following it probably deserves. Find me when you wake up. What? Come find me when you wake up. Yeah! Closing in at number two, we're shocked at some of the blockbusters that went surprisingly overlooked. Maleficent got some pretty mixed reviews while still managing to please audience members in a wide range of demographics, and John Wick gave us a hilarious, campy action concept, but only managed to do okay. However, for our number two, we've got to give it to the disappointing flop of Edge of Tomorrow, aka Live, Die, Repeat, aka Groundhog Day with aliens and gunsuits. For the amount of complaining we hear about sequels and mega-franchises, Tom Cruise's turn as the star in this adaptation of a highly original 
graphic novel resulted in a depressing turnout and box office take. It's an incredibly smart action movie that takes the familiar repetition concept in a fascinating new direction. What if you had to keep living the same day over and over? What if when you died, you were reset back to when you woke up? What if that day you had to live was the craziest day of your life and you were thrown into a massive alien battle that you were sure to lose? Tom Cruise is at his least crazy-eyed and benefits massively from the brusque charisma of Emily Blunt, and the writing, editing, and cinematography are all top-notch. It's exciting, badass, and even hilarious in all the right places, which all sounds like a recipe for limitless success, but it was simply underseen. Fortunately for us, it's still available under its new name, so be sure to grab it on demand in order to support more original, smartly written sci-fi action for everyone. It's me. It's f***ing him. He's on his f***ing period, bruv. Stepping in, mugging man off like I was a f***ing baghead, scratching for doggins on the f***ing yard, when I ain't want this group. It's me f***ing standing up for? I'm standing up because I'm standing up. What? Bruh. I'm standing up now. What? What are you standing up for? Come here, me sit down. Fool. Come here, me sit down. Come. Come and do something. Hey, come here. Black, come I'm standing up. Man. Ain't shit going down, man. Because you would have lumped Des and he would have shanked you and I would have finished the f***ing group all together, you cunt. So relax. And finally, we arrive at number one. And as much as we would have liked to, we can't give the slot to any of the other wonderful and underrated films that came out this year, like The Trip to Italy, Under the Skin, Blue Ruin, The Raid 2, Le Weekend, or The Babadook that just missed our list because we're giving it to the superlative starred up. We're talking 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, a whirlwind performance by Jack O'Connell that somehow manages to straddle the razor-thin line between empathy and disgust and drive it like a knife into the viewer's hearts, and a supporting cast with more than enough realism to make us ask if we were actually watching a documentary. Startup is the story of a young prisoner with violence coursing through his veins who is transferred from juvenile detention to an adult prison prematurely for bad behavior. And the prison he's transferred to just so happens to be the same one where his father is held. It's a powder keg of a setup with a chain reaction of explosions that keep getting bigger, but it only grossed $50,000 at the box office. 50,000. No one is seeing this movie and it just might be one of the best of the year, which is why it's our choice for the most underrated film of of 2014. So what do you think? Do we leave out some of your favorite underrated movies? Do you disagree with some of our choices? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more Cinefix Movie Lists.